at my lecture about the Illuminati and how they can mind control and use manipulations to get people to do certain things. When I worked at the Montauk uh, project, one of, one of my jobs was to go into this hyperspace level of existence to determine what the symbols mean and bring it back for deciphering. The government knew that most of the alien groups they dealt with didn't use language per se. They used this hyperspace language that was a triad. And I call it a triad because it consists of three different parts, which are color, tone, and archetype. Now, when I talk about archetype, I'm not talking about the psychological or Jungian version of a mother archetype, father. No, this is actually a geometric shape in color that emanates from the mind pattern and from your DNA. I actually have prepared booklets for all of you so that you have a glossary of terms and other things in here that will come in handy during the next day or two. Now, what does hyperspace mean? That word is becoming more prevalent in the language in the last couple of years. But the first place you ever heard it was back in the mid-1960s on Star Trek, when they go into hyperspace. You know, but that's not really what hyperspace is exactly. And in order to explain what hyperspace is, I, I use an analogy, because that usually helps you get a concept across and understand it in the mind. If you consider physical reality as if it existed in, as the yolk of an egg, then the shell of the egg would be the astral planes. The astral planes are the borderline around all physical realities, and there's more than one physical reality. And it kind of keeps it contained into its integrity. Beyond that is hyperspace. Hyperspace is like the glue that holds together all realities, astral and physical. Literally, for lack of a better term, it's a God mind. It's what keeps everything in existence in existence. It's the intelligence behind all of it. And it operates with color, tone, and archetype. So that if you understand the formula in hyperspace language for various parts of existence, you can then change that formula to manifest what you wish to manifest. Now, subconsciously, you're doing that every second of every day because you're creating your reality constantly. However, if you're not happy with what you're creating, you're the only one that can change it. Because in existence, in God-mind existence, physical reality is almost like an era in thinking. It exists because people don't take, or beings don't take responsibility for their own thought process. And so when that happens, instantly it's projected out so that they can see it externally. And that's why physical reality exists. You can also compare it to water. If these were various stages of water, this would be ice, this would be water, and this would be steam. So this is physical reality is like frozen energy. You can think of it like that. If this would be ice, water, and steam. And you, as a being, exist in all of those layers, and all those levels. And you'll notice that in creation, three is important. 
There is always three stages of everything. That's why one of the first archetypes that you learn is the triangle, which is what the pyramids are all about. That's the symbolism of them. And that is perfect creation. That's just the symbol of perfect creation. And you'll notice that in many um, uniforms or symbols throughout corporate world and business world and, and government, they use a lot of triangle symbolism because they're creating their own perfect world. Okay. Any questions on this so far? Okay. Um, I'm going to go over here and talk about um, the flow chart of creation. And when I talk about flow chart of creation, I may use terms or words that um, are just for concept understanding. You feel free to interchange them with whatever words or, or terms are more comfortable for you. I'm only using based on my own training for lack of better ability in verbal uh, communication in society, there are certain terms that are just acceptable to everybody, even though they're not exactly that accurate of a description. For example, when you talk about God, what does that mean? Well, you can use all that is, God, mind, universal intelligence, whatever is appropriate for you. So please feel free, to whatever I write on the board, to alter it to suit you. I'm just trying to get the concept across. Okay. And I think I have to stay on the camera till he comes back. There's the eraser. May I erase this? So I'm going to start, I'll use something maybe a little darker. With God mind. And again, you can call this whatever you like. I'm going to call this whole thing the flow chart. of existence. Now, if we accept the concept that God mind is all that is, everything that exists in any reality is simply a manifestation of a super intelligence, then that's really all that there is. That's it. Everything else is a form of that. Theoretically, and in many ancient texts and, and philosophies, God mind itself, because it's not he or she, it's an it, doesn't even know how it began. It just knows that it is. And it has no ability to even understand if there's anything outside of it. Even if there were, there'd be no way of communicating or connecting with it, because it is self-contained. This is self-contained. So that God mind itself, when it started to think about what it was, became self-aware, it then instantly generated another level of itself. Because once there's self-awareness, there is a concept of I am. I am something. And then it starts to snowball and repeat and repeat. So the very first level of God mind self-awareness I call for back, lack of better term, Christ consciousness. Feel free to change it to whatever you like. <clears throat> this 
This is not a person, it's a level of awareness, a level of existence. And then when that itself becomes self-aware, because this creates this, so that this actually has all the attributes of this, they're really one and the same, they're just different levels of the same thing. So therefore, once this becomes self-aware, and then creates this, which is a replica of itself, then this then does the same thing and becomes self-aware of itself. And the next level that it creates, or did create, was the angelic hierarchy. Here again, this is an energetic level. These are not names of people or things. 